seems to me that our January theme of hope and despair is what you might call timely. I mean, after all, there's plenty to despair about. Very grim reports on climate change and photos of children being tear gassed at the border and discord in all walks of life. There's plenty to list that's just wrong and not getting better. And you have to ask, how did we get this way? Well, the Pandora story is one answer. There was this mythical woman created as part of a vendetta who opened a box and all of the demons of evils in the world came spilling out. It's really kind of a horrible story. I mean, really, like kind of an offensively bad story. We know the story, it seems to me, where it's a woman's fault that all the bad things happen. We've heard this story before. In the case of Pandora, she doesn't even have the agency of being her own person. She's a created tool who goes and makes everything horrible, just like a woman, wouldn't you know? And the Greeks were pretty darn sexist, pretty thoroughly patriarchal. And in the Greek world, women were associated with the flesh, with the body, while men were associated with the higher faculties, with spirituality and intellect. And the Greeks were pretty darn clear that these were the higher faculties, that the good, important parts of life were those masculine virtues of thought and spirit and philosophy. And Plato even goes so far as to say that the world that we experience is not the real world, that the real world is this platonic ideal and what we see is only shadows cast by the perfection of this real world. Which gets down to an interesting way to see the Pandora story. Because the fact of the matter is that the world we live in is Pandora's world. It is the feminine worlds of flesh and blood and body and things that happen. The ideal world is in fact the myth. That, that part is not real and yet we spend so much of our time holding on to those ideals, holding on to how things should be, holding on to what's right. And I wonder if maybe despair is what happens when we layer our idealized, intellectualized, philosophical understanding of how things should be on top of what is, on top of that feminine world of flesh and bone. Because the reality is that Pandora, if she stands in for life, does open that box of difficulties, of tragedies, of all of the horrors of the world, because those things are just implicit in living. Things die, things change, things are lost, things are done badly for a variety of reasons. That's just how the world operates. But when you layer a set of expectations about how things must be on top of that, that's when you get despair because things are never going to meet those ideals. They're just not. There's a mismatch and despair happens in the loss of something that was never really possible to begin with. The only actual world is the world of the open box in which the bad things happen because it's a world of reality. But the crucial piece of that is that hope is always at the bottom of the box because hope 
is implicit in those things. Hope is what you get when you have a world that changes. And that's what the real world is. The world full of not meeting our expectations and not living up to our ideals and people doing what it is that they want to do because they feel like it. Everything changes. Not always in the ways that you want, but it's all dynamic. It's all full of stories. And some of those stories are tragedies and some of them are delightful comedies and some of them are a mix of both. Eh, pretty much all of them are a mix of both. That's how it happens. And so there's always the hope that things can be different because things are always going to be different. So what then do we do with that hope? How do we manage it? Because I'm not suggesting that the way to live in the world is to just let things wash over you without any kind of interaction, without any kind of intervention, without any sense of empowerment. We are not, in fact, like Pandora, tools of something else. We're all beings in the world with our own sense of engagement. And the way we engage, the secret to that engagement in a way that brings hope is there in the story. It's the villain. It's the gift of the goddess Hera, curiosity. If it's curiosity that opens the box, it's because curiosity is what enables us to engage. When we're able to go into any situation and ask, what's going on here? Who benefits? Who suffers? What do I want? What are possibilities of things that could happen? How do I want to engage? What does this person want from me? The questions are endless, but when you can come from that place of curiosity rather than a place of expectation of how things have to be, then there's hope. Then there's a way to move things forward, always asking the questions, because the villain of the story is the hero is the gift of the goddess, is the thing that will carry us through. We ask, and then we move forward, and then we ask again and again and again.